Welcome back to Drinking by Mike Shaw. My name is Emma and today I am getting soppy. I never think of myself as a romance reader because I'm not. I don't really read much romance as in the books that are in the genre of romance. But I started to think about love stories because it is approaching Valentine's Day and spoiler alert for this video I am being sponsored by Ana Luisa for their Valentine's Day sale. So I started thinking about love stories and actually when I went through my bookshelves I found so many books that I absolutely adore because of the gorgeous love stories in them. So it turns out that even if I don't read romance, I do love reading romance. I've readjusted because I was slightly falling off the sofa. So before we dive into all of these romantic books that I've chosen, I'm going to show you my new Ana Luisa jewellery because, as I said, this video is very kindly sponsored by Ana Luisa. As we are approaching Valentine's Day, Ana Luisa is really a website that you should have bookmarked because jewellery makes a wonderful Valentine's Day present and also, especially, because at the moment they are running a buy one, get one 40% off sale. If you click the link in my description box below, you can go through to that sale and browse all of the amazing jewellery that they have on offer, buy something for yourself, buy something for someone you love. For example, you could buy the Nina heart earrings that I'm wearing. These are super cute and sparkly and they cost $59 if you get them full price, but there's a sale. You could also buy someone this gorgeous Hannah Lee heart necklace. This one is $75 full price, but you can get it 40% off in the sale and it makes me feel like a princess. I was also sent this gorgeous delicate Coret bracelet. This one was also $75 if you get it full price. So I am draped in Anna Luisa today and so should you be and so should the person that you love be. So go click on my link in the description box below, go and browse their website and get shopping in that sale. So, I have picked a pile of romantic books from my shelf and I'm going to go through them now in no particular order at all. But we might as well start with a childhood favourite, Ella Enchanted. You know how much I love this book. The pairing in this is between Ella, the main character, and Prince Char, who's the Prince Charming figure in this Cinderella retelling, and I have just always loved their love story. The whole book in general is a subversion of loads of Cinderella tropes, including a subversion of the prince just constantly swooping in to save the day. There are times in this when Char does come and save Ella, but there are also times when Ella saves Char. Also their relationship is very two-sided right from the beginning, so in lots of the fairy tales that we were, you know, the traditional fairy tales that we grew up with, they basically just, the girl doesn't really ever say anything. The man sees the girl standing there looking pretty, he falls in love with her, we never really hear if she's in love with him. We just hear that it's nice that he loves her and then he comes and chases her. In this one, they find each other really interesting and they find each other really funny. In fact, Ella is the most interesting and funny of them all and really clever and he's just absolutely charmed by her and we get to see them writing letters back and forth and just falling very genuinely in love with each other. I think it's a wonderful love story. And also, in true fairy tale form, true love does save the day but not in the traditional way. Sticking with some classics, I love all of Jane Austen's books I'm a big fan of all of them. I think that most of them are beautiful love stories, amongst other things. They're also comedies, they're dramas, they're amazing. But in terms of the love stories, Persuasion has to have my favourite of them all. So the love story in here is between Anne Elliot and Captain Frederick Wentworth. Fun story, you know Hottie McHart Wentworth Miller from Prison Break? Named after Captain Wentworth. So, Anne and Wentworth were in love many years ago, before the book started. But when he proposed to her, she wants to say yes, because she loved him, but her family were like, no, he's not good enough, you can't do it. And she was persuaded to say no. He was pissed, cut to the start of this book, when he is about to re-enter her life and he is still holding a grudge, but that might not be all he's holding on to. That accidentally sounded like a dirty joke, I think, but that wasn't what I meant. In Fried Green Tomatoes at the Whistle Stop Cafe, there is a love story between Ruth and Iggy. Apparently in the movie adaptation, which I haven't seen, I really want to watch it, um, I've heard lots of people saying that in the movie it's kind of slightly easier to believe like they're just friends, just gals being pals, raising a child together. In the book, even though it's still not explicit, it is much more obvious that they are not just friends. I need to reread this one because it's been quite a few years now but I absolutely adored it the first time I read it. Because as well as being a love story, it's also like a murder mystery. It's got two timelines. It's got like threads about racism in there. It's a fascinating book. It's got recipes at the back if you want to cook any of the honestly truly disgusting sounding food that they eat, like fried green tomatoes. 
why would I ever read them? For a really sweet later in life romance, there is Our Souls at Night by Kent Haroff. This one is about two older next door neighbours who have known each other for many, many years and have now lost their families or been separated from their families and they decide to start sleeping together at night, spending the night together just as a way of feeling a bit less lonely. So it starts off just this companionship, but it does then blossom into something more. And it's really lovely. It's really beautifully written. It feels like one of those sleepy conversations that you have with someone you love. I just loved the experience of reading it. It does have an ending that made me very, very upset, but it's just, it's a beautiful love story and it's a beautiful friendship story as well. This one might be controversial. So I've got a YA book here, All the Bright Places by Jennifer Niven. I read this one, I don't know, six years ago. And it then did become like the topic of conversation. A lot of people didn't like this book. Um, and I think from what I remember of this conversation, the main thing was that this might not be a book you would want to read if you yourself are struggling with mental health issues. So this is a book about loving someone with depression and it is very much aimed at the person on the outside, not the person with depression. And I heard a lot of people saying that actually when you're going through mental health struggles of your own, reading this book was massively unhelpful, which may be the case. I read this one before I personally was struggling with depression. So bear that warning in mind. But as a story about loving someone with depression and the hardships involved in that, I loved it. It's these two teenagers falling in love, Violet and Finch, and it's very, very sad because Finch has a lot of issues that falling in love can't save. This one's not controversial, everyone loves this one, The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. This is the love story between Achilles and Patroclus. So it's a retelling of the Trojan War story, and I've heard various versions of that story throughout my life growing up, and Achilles and Patroclus are portrayed as having different relationships in different ones. Sometimes they are friends, sometimes they are cousins, sometimes they are lovers. And in this book, they are very explicitly lovers. And Achilles, in a lot of the stories that he pops up in, is kind of a douche. I've thought that, like, separately from this book, Achilles is kind of a douche. In this book, I loved him so much, but it wasn't because he was being better, it was because Patroclus, I don't know if that's how you pronounce that name, Patroclus, Patroclus, whatever, he, is so wonderful and he loves Achilles so much. So I just fell in love with both of them and was rooting for them every step of the way, even though, if you know your Greek mythology, you know it's not gonna end particularly well. I've got two books here, a series, Pages Few and Pages For Her. Pages Few came first, so this is about a university student falling in love with a grad student. So she's a few years older, Flannery and Anne, and it's about this passionate love affair they have, Flannery in particular falling so passionately in love with Anne, and we see their relationship blossom and destruct. I really, really loved this book, and I really fell in love with Anne along with Flannery. I kind of went on that journey with her. So this book would have completely destroyed me if I didn't, luckily by the time I read it, already know there was gonna be a sequel. This came out a lot later, so I was late to the game on this one, which was good for me, because it meant I could then dive straight into this. In Pages for Her, we're going to meet these two characters again. So there is going to be some kind of reunion. I won't tell you what happens. I won't tell you whether or not it gives you closure or not. I don't want to give any spoilers. But at least we get to see them together again. This is potentially another controversial one to put in this video because A Little Life is famously a very, very sad book with a lot of very disturbing topics explored in it. But Love is also a major theme in this book. And it's the main thing that I took from this book. I've read this twice now and all the different sorts of love in here are the main things that I found so important and so moving in this. So there's the love between friends, there is the love, a kind of father and son love between Jude, the main character, and his adoptive father. And there is also a love story. Two of the friends in this book do end up falling in love and having a relationship. And their love story is just beautiful to me. So it's these two men who love each other in different ways and their love evolves throughout the book because we follow them through a few decades and they start as best best friends and that turns into something else. And no matter what else awful stuff is going on in this book, the love that they had for each other just like shone off the page. The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. This has lots of love stories in it, as you might guess from the title, 
but the main love story that runs throughout it is between Evelyn and a woman, the woman who is actually the love of her life. And so we follow them through all of this melodrama and it can be very painful to watch. Why can't they just communicate and just sort their issues out? But it's also just this wonderful forbidden love story that I just fell hard for. Again, I've read this book twice. Tin Man by Sarah Woodman has not one but two great love stories in this. So main character is a man called Ellis who is in the present day married to a woman who he is absolutely madly in love with. They have this wonderful relationship. In the past, he was in love with his best male friend, Michael. And that was in a time when being gay was not something that they could be open about. And so we get to hear both of these love stories. And that was the thing that I loved so particularly about this book. It's a really, really great depiction of bisexuality because it manages simultaneously to explore how tragic it is that Michael and Ellis couldn't be together and how they were torn apart from each other and how unfair that was. But it doesn't, by doing that, diminish the love that Ellis has in the present day for his wife. That is also an equally real and strong and passionate love. And a lot of it is set in Oxford. And I lived in Oxford for a year and absolutely loved it. So it's also about the love story between me and Oxford. The final one I've got here is actually non-fiction, but a love story that I have read about through books that has particularly captured my heart is, well actually there's two, the love between Vita Sackville West and Virginia Woolf, and also the love between Vita Sackville West and Violet Trefusis. So I read about the love story between Vita and Violet first. At uni I read the book Portrait of a Marriage by Nigel Nicholson, who is Vita Sackville West's son, and he wrote a book all about the marriage between his parents, Vita Sackville West and Harold Nicholson. But he included in the book a lot of details of the love story between his mother Vita and this woman Violet Trefusis. They loved each other for years. This was an epic, sweeping love story. It was just tragic, the ways in which they were torn apart from each other. I really remember sitting in the library, just tearing over like these letters that are included in the book that they write to each other and just feeling like my heart was gonna break. And then this last year, I read this collection of love letters between Vita Sackler West and Virginia Woolf. Vita Sackler West, she was falling in love all around town. I will say that. But one of the people she fell in love with was Virginia Woolf. And we all know that that story isn't going to end great. But again, we have all of these just passionate letters written between them. Vita says at one point, I am reduced to a thing that wants Virginia. I mean, considering they are both writers, they do really ham it up in these letters, but I loved them. So that was a selection of some of my favourite love stories that I found on these shelves. And from that, I'm inspired. It turns out I do love reading about love, so I'm going to read some more. I have on my TBR these two books, Love and Colour by Boli Babalola, which is a collection of short stories all about love, and Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson, which is about two young black British artists falling in love in London. And I guess I'm romantic now, so I'll read these. So those are my love story recommendations, and once again, do click the link in my description box below to go and browse the sale on the Anna Louisa website, and buy yourself, your loved ones, your friends, buy everyone some lovely Valentine's Day gifts. See you next time! Picnic with my best friends We start to plan what we 